So a friend of mine brought me this uh, Sony TV to look at, uh, Bravia TV, and you know, it's first glance doesn't seem like there's anything really wrong with it. But we go and turn it on, and we give it a sec. Power LED comes on, uh, image the screen turns on, and it looks extremely washed out, and the colors don't quite look right. But so we can see this a little better. Let's switch the input over to HDMI. I'm gonna turn on this 360 over here and we'll see what it looks like. And it's just about on, there it goes. So there's audio, there's an image, but the colors are all screwy. Almost, uh, it almost looks like the colors are inverted, which is actually what he told me when he, when he brought it over to me, told, told me that it had this funky issue. And, uh, off the top of my head, I had no idea what was wrong with this thing. And uh, I decided to do a quick little Google search and it turns out that there's a chip on the T-Con board that's apparently known to go bad in these TVs and um, I forgot what it's called off the top of my head, I'll look it up real quick. But basically it's what causes uh, this problem to happen and uh, until you replace that, that I see it's not going to go back to normal. So let's look at the back of the TV so we can see what that looks like. So looking at the back of the TV, we've got our usual assortment of boards. We got our main power supply here. We got the inverters and stuff and balancers for the cold cathode tubes. The input board with uh, I believe is like the scaler over here. And here's the T-Con board on this TV. This one's actually huge. I, I thought it was going to be like, you know, something small up here up at the top, but this one's actually rather large. It's got a big, a heat, big heat sink right here. Uh, we can tell that there's a chip right there, which I think is the pretty much what we're going to be looking at. Um, here's the cable that goes to the the input board with the scaler and all that. So we're going to be removing this board and that's where the IC is that we're going to be replacing. I actually already ordered one because I was going to, after what I found online is that it's called the, or it's labeled AS15-G which is the original one on the TCOM board here but uh, I guess you can't really get those. I guess the G stands for green package or something like that. Um, this one's actually an AS15-F, which uh, should be a direct replacement and it should work. So we'll be replacing that and we'll see if it fixes the issue on this. Okay, so I've removed all the screws and now this uh, shield here should come off and it's lifting the board with it. Um, there's gonna be two ribbon cables up here that are probably gonna be very delicate. So we're gonna wanna be careful with that comes a shield, there's the board. It's got these little pegs right here that kind of hold it in place, so that's kind of handy to have. Let's see if we can get this over the top here. And I guess that's gonna stay okay. So here's the two ribbon cables. Let me zoom in a little bit on that so you can get a better look at it. And there we go. Get that focus there. Okay, so these are these locking ones that have this big old tab on them, so I'm gonna pull that back. Now this should just pull out. This is actually a lot, or there's a lot more in here than I was expecting to see. Let me zoom out. And, I mean, because most TCOM boards I've seen from other TVs are usually rather small, but this one's got like two, uh, I'm guessing they're gonna be like the, the timing chips for all that stuff, and it's got, they got their own RAM. There's like another big uh, IC over on this side. There's this whole area here that's all covered up in this uh, thermal material, and, uh, these aren't sliding out. Really want to be careful with this. I don't want to tear those. Okay, the right one over here is out. This left one over here is still kind of sticking. And there it goes. Okay, so that's out. So yeah, they've got this uh, thermal stuff all over the, the board here. And it looks like there's something else right here. And maybe something long over on this area. I don't know what it is. And I'm not going to remove it because I don't want to have to reapply those on. But And then here's like another, I see right here in the right in the middle. So that tiny one right there is the one we're going to be looking at. And on the back, uh, not a whole lot. There's one right here in the corner, a couple of pads uh, to probably keep vibration to a minimum against the, uh, you know, because this board's pretty long and then the only spots that it's held on by is by those um, the screws. So it's probably just to keep it vibrating too much. All right, there's our chip. We can see that it indeed does say AS15-G. So we're not going to lollygag here around, or around here too much. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and 
get right into it. I'm going to be using hot air to remove this. Uh, let's put a little bit of flux around the pins of that chip just to help us out a little bit. And I'm just going to give it a nice coat. I'm going to bring this down here. It shouldn't take too long. Kind of an odd angle here because I've got the camera like right in front of the thing with the, the macro lens on, so we can get a good shot of it. Don't have like one of those inspection microscopes or anything, so I can't have a good view from up top. It's really hard not to accidentally pull any of these other capacitors and stuff around it off. So I just realized that my hot air station isn't working right. It, there's something up with it. Uh, the, the digits on the front of it were jumping all over the place. Turns out that one of the wires from the thermocouple at the tip of the nozzle was uh, loose from the board that it's uh, soldered into. So I fixed it for now and I think now it should work. So we're going to give this another go here. See if uh, we can get this chip off. Hopefully come up easier. Okay, I think we're gonna do it this time. There it goes, that was a lot easier. <laughs> Put a little more flux on here and then we're going to clean these pads off with some soldering braid. good. Let's clean it up with a little bit of alcohol. Okay, let's see, make sure well, the pads look pretty good there. All right, I think we're going to be good to go here. So one thing I just noticed, uh, this is the original chip. You can see it's uh, got a solid back. That's the, uh, well, or the bottom side. And here is the new one. This one has a bare metal back there, there or bottom. So uh, this chip must put out quite a bit of heat, especially if they've got that thermal material up at the top there to transfer heat to the rest of the case. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh flux to these pads here. Let's make sure we got the right orientation on this. A little I see here, we're gonna we got the dot right there on the bottom or the lower left hand corner. You can tell I'm all shake here. This thing is it's pretty small. I'm gonna try to get it set there as best as I can. Okay, I've got a smaller tip on my soldering iron here, and I'm going to, first of all, tack the pin right here on the bottom right corner. Get that to stick. Mm, can't tell if it's doing much here. It's extremely difficult from where I'm standing. I think that might be okay. I'll rotate this a bit here, because... Otherwise I can't quite get to it. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna 
See if I can get this other corner here tacked on. Alright, that should be good. Alright. Let's try to go along the top. Okay, that's not working. I need more flux here. All right, let's try this again. Get some light up here, okay. That is not working at all this time. Okay, so I ended up having to do this uh, completely off camera because I could not get a good angle with my soldering iron behind the the camera here and the camera is so close to the board that it was just impossible so I did it and uh, I gotta clean the flux off but there are no bridged pins or at least there shouldn't be got some right here but I think it's just yeah it's just the shininess of the flux reflecting off there um, as you can see none of the pins are none of the pins are bridged so everything should be good I'm just gonna give this a cleaning with some alcohol and then we'll put it back on and give it a shot Fingers crossed, it should work, hopefully. Oh, oh while I was cleaning it, I noticed uh, there's, a, there, there's a bridge right here. You can see these two pins from this resistor, those two bridged. Doesn't look like any of these other ones did. Um, I had a really hard time around these caps just because they're so close to those, to the pins on the chip there on the right hand side. There's a little ball of solder right there, just kind of a little ball there but um, nothing around here everything looks okay so I just got to get rid of that bridge uh, I'll double check these just to be sure but um yeah it looks like everything should be okay otherwise all right so there we go now it's clean got rid of that bridge down here on the bottom oh this still has flux on it but uh, everything else looks pretty good so now we're just gonna give it a shot Okay, so let's put this back on. These ribbon cables here are probably going to be a bit of a pain. And I make sure they go in all the way and that they're aligned properly. See. See this one here on the right, there it goes. Just slide in. I'm going to get these little pegs right here to hold the board for me. That feels like it's in all the way. It's locked that in place. That feels okay. All right. Get this out of the way. Put this back on. And I had already put the little pad back on over here on the on that AS15 IC. And I guess we can plug this in. Put some screws on. Okay, we're all set up here again. Let's see what it does this time. Got it all plugged in. Hey, it didn't do that funky thing that goes up, that sort of like white that went to the side and uh... Ha! Sweet! It's all good now. Well, I mean it looks a lot better for sure. Let's go ahead and turn on the 360 and see how that looks now. Should look good. In a sec. Any day now? No? Alright. 
There it is. I just had it on the wrong input. So, for sure, it's working now. You can see that the colors are back to normal. So, yeah, it looks fine now. So, that was it for sure, that AS15 chip. So, alright guys, well, another successful repair. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.